Hey, hey, peacemakers, it's the Soul Coach coming at you with another episode. So sit back and let's find your peace of mind. You guys, this is Enjoying Entrepreneurship featuring Daisy Amos, better known as the CEO of Desire Boutique. Um, This New Orleans native is going to give us a little taste of what her journey has been like um, on the journey of entrepreneurship and just let us know how things are um, now that she is growing her business. Um, She's now a motivational speaker and just keeping it really real with us. Um, I think this is like one of the realest episodes that I've done. Um, and it shows you the growth of a entrepreneur's journey from the beginning until the end. Um, especially not knowing that um, this is where it could go. So I definitely want you guys to sit back and listen to this episode. Sorry to disturb your peace, but I'm going to drop a sponsor ad right about now. Hello world, this is yours truly, the CEO of the Zayu Boutique, where we cater to both women and men, where you can get the first look and the final word. You can catch us on Instagram, which is iShopDesireB, that is iShop, D-I-S-A-Y-A-H-B, or you can catch us on a local website, which is www.ishopdesirebee.com. And don't forget, baby, you can get the flyest look with the latest trends. Don't hesitate to come see us. is Desire Amos. Desire Amos, she is strong, she's intelligent, she's, you know, willing to learn, she's like, she asks for wisdom and guidance, she knows how to take a loss and be able to stand on 10 toes at the same time, she knows how to go for what she wants and she knows how to keep her belief status in the same process of going for what she wants. She's not the average chick to be able to, like, start something and not finish it. She's like the type of chick, well, I know what I want. I study what I want. This is what I'm going for. I'm not backing down until I get it. Okay. So how did you get your start in entrepreneurship, and why did you start? I got my first uh, start in entrepreneurship when um, I was taking – I have two degrees, but my first degree was – the, uh, fashion and marketing, and I was taking the classes for it. And so my teacher, we was doing an exam to where, like, we had to pretend like we had a storefront, and we had a certain budget, and we had to be able to use that budget and to be able to describe how we was going to be able to use that bu- budget and how we was going to be able to pretty much, like, utilize our store, like what we wanted our store to be at and how we wanted it to be designed and what we what, what was we going to have in it and stuff like that. And so um, I remember I was, like, the last person doing mine. And so I ended up doing my production, and I ended up explaining and going into depth on how I wanted my business to be and what kind of business I wanted, where I wanted it to be at, and stuff like that. And then after I finished her class, I used to go back and talk to my teacher because me and her was about the same age at the time. And, you know, I used to do a lot of fashion shows and stuff like that with her. And one day she asked me to come back so I could be able to judge her previous class on, like, this little model thing that we had we we used to always work on. And so I ended up looking in her her side corner, and I saw that she kept my my vision board for my business. So, and I was like, well, you kept my, I was like, you kept my my vision board for my business? She was like, yeah, I kept the best ones for last. She was like, I really like the way how you describe how you were run your business and how you wanted it and how you was going to, structure it and stuff like that and so I also kept seeing a lot of people who like own businesses and stuff like that I'm the type of person who doesn't like to be micromanaged if that makes sense so by me not liking to be micromanaged and I know for a fact that I have the ability to be able to do a lot of other things I figured well you know what my teacher she kept my exam my my whole exam detail vision board like you know, and that was important to me. So I was like, you know what? I think I have something that I really want to do. So what I do is I just go on ahead and do that. That's how I ended up getting my start. And as I got my start, I started I started to begin, like, to 
look at other females that was doing it and stuff like that. And I was like, man, I want to do it too. And that's how I ended up starting out. Wow. that's It, it was all by accident, basically, because, you know, some people, they go into entrepreneurship and they, they're like, oh, well, I, I want to own my own business and all this stuff. And they have an intent to do it and they just start doing it. But you actually went into it via educational purposes, which is a great thing. So with you um, being a New Orleans native, um, what has been instilled in you at a young age, like any values that you um, you and your family have um, that you guys instill in each other at a young age? Uh, well, see, with my family, we are like, uh, let me try to describe this. We are open people, you know. We talk to anyone. We invite anyone into our family, our group home. We're more humble. We're more categorized as like a unit. So when we bring someone new, into our family system, we treat them like they're already family. So that's how I'm able to be able to, like, share what I know. But my people are the type of people who's not going to give you the type of information without them already doing it or going through it. Now, some of them may have been missing stuff like that, but what I love for my family is, like, we if we have a problem, we address it. And if we got something that we're struggling with, we keep on doing it until we get it together. So... You know, and when I say that, we keep on doing it until we get it together. If we're working on something, we're going to continue to work on it until it's finally done. We're going to continue to go for what we want until we achieve it because back and down is just not the it's not the perception that we want. We want to be able to know how it feels to be able to have that whatever we want. And that's what's been installed into me as a young age. Like, I've been around my mother, my uncle, and my aunties and stuff like that, and one thing for sure I know about is that they always went for what they wanted. They always hustled into what they wanted. My grandfather was a hustler, so it's just like I've been around that, you know, all my life. And so seeing the ambition that they have to be able to hustle and make sure that they have everything and be able to be on equal grounds, that's what kept on to me like, okay, you could be in this situation, but you don't show it. But at the same time, you're still going for what you want, so you can already have it. And that's a great system, support system to have around you, especially with you being so vulnerable with um, creating a business and having um, services and products for people. And it's like you you have to have that support system of people who have been through certain things and who can keep you on the pace that you need to go um, with the motivation and the words of encouragement and the letting you know, hey, I've been through this or I've been through something similar to it. Um, so, therefore, you should try this or you should try that and not give up. And a lot of people, well, as entrepreneurs, yeah, we we don't have – sometimes we don't have that support system behind us, and that's where it's like, okay, we want to give up. So that is really great that you have that support system around you um, because you can see it within, like, your social media presence and stuff. Um, you can tell that you're, you, like, in my mind, the way I see it, especially with, um, like, when I first came across you on Instagram, like, mm-hmm. you can tell um, that you, you know how some people say, like, the lions are, like, I've, I've seen memes, like, about lions and how they're real, um, like, protective, and they are the ones who, like, run the jungle and stuff. That's basically, I see you as a lioness, and, like, you can tell that you have a lot of people behind you that aren't afraid to go through things, and they still keep persevering at the end of the day. Yes. yes. So, last year... um or the year before last when you started your business, um, when you created it and you told um, people about it, um, did, was there people saying, oh, you're going to be like that other Instagram boutique or you're going to be like this and this and um, like were there people doubting you or did you have everybody behind you on the same page and everything? Who were who your day one supporters from the beginning? Okay, uh, when I first said that I was going to come out with a beauty, you know, I had um, I had a, 
I only had like a handful of supporters. And those handful of supporters came from um, people who were like, you know, considered family. They was like close friends. So they was like, yeah, girl, you should do that. I could see you doing that. You know, my family members was like, yes, go ahead and do that. Um, I had one person who was, oh, he's also a, still a close friend. He's like family as well. He was like, how, well, how are you going to do it and stuff like that? I was like, well, it doesn't, at this moment, it doesn't matter how I'm going to do it. It's just going to get done. And so I'm going to study what I want and I'm going to go ahead and get it. And then, um, he was like, well, who's going to take your pictures? You need photographers. I was like, I'm not going to get no photographers because I'm on the budget. So by me being on the budget, I'm going to take my own pictures. Uh, that was the only thing that was gonna that was my that uh that was being doubted up on me on that I couldn't take my own pictures but they came out amazing and this person still asked me how do I take my own pictures but as Desire Boutique was being created you know people was like well how are you gonna be able to maintain your money how are you gonna be able to do this and does do that my thing was it doesn't matter how I'm gonna be able to have this and that I'm gonna study it and it's gonna open up and when I did that you know. I, I ended up creating Desire Boutique. I ended up creating what the name was going to be. I hadn't already created the name when I started, when I was in fashion and marketing. So, um, like I said, while my teacher keeping my project and keeping my detailed information on it, how I was going to run my store, pretty much my vision board, I just kept that in my head and kept the name. And, you know, Desire Boutique, you know, my day one supporters was a part of, like I said, my family system, you know, my aunties and my mom and my brothers, you know, they was right on with it. My sister was with it. My cousin was with it. His friends was with it because all of us are like, you know, one big circle. And, you know, they're about entrepreneurship as well. So it was just like, as they was with it, it was like, okay, good. I got a, I got a good system right here that says, okay, go for it. And that's exactly what I did. That was just like, I was already going to go for it, but it was a confirmation with my family and friends to even go for it even more so. Yeah, and that's one thing I was going to hit on next. And I was going to say, how in the world did you balance um, a business and school and working and especially with you being the model, the photographer, the graphic designer, this and that? Like, I can I can only imagine, like, how you how you felt, but how did you stay organized and keep yourself grounded, especially knowing you had to play different roles within your business and knowing that you were on a budget, so you had to sacrifice your time and your energy to get all of this stuff done? Sis, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, one thing about this is that when knowledge is, is key, okay, so... When I say knowledge is key, I mean that's the best thing you can ever have, the best tool you can ever have, because with that type of tool, you'll be able to be any obstacle that everybody else is complaining about. So the thing is, is this. I learned that the Internet was built for you to be able to, for you to be able to knowledge thyself. So what I did was I did a lot of studying. And when I first started, when I first wrote out on how I wanted my business, I said I wanted to be the head captain. Because that's how I'm gonna have to start out as the head captain. I won't know. I don't want to run through no second party, no third party, no anything. So I already knew the obstacles I was gonna be able to have to face. Now, balancing work and school. Now, at the beginning when I was when I opened up Desire Boutique, I had two jobs and was going to school. So on my off days, I would do. I would be able to buy inventory, and then if I didn't have off days, I would stay up at night and be able to process my orders, and I stay up, because I'm a mom as well. So I help my son with his homework, get him together, and it's like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm doing the photo shoot right there. Like, right about now, I got I have a space to be able to take my pictures. But at this time, I'm taking the pictures in my room. This was about last year. Mm-hmm. So last year, as I began to start, I was at the point of just, like, you know, uh, buying items at least once a like one or two uh, things in bulk every once or two months or something like that. So what I do is is that, you know, I was taking pictures in my room. using I was utilizing the area that I have and utilizing everything and figuring out how everything will work out and still be able to come out as decent as it needed to be. And so as I 
organize that. I say, okay, well, I'm off on this day. I can do a photo shoot on this day. Well, on this day, I don't go to work until this day, so I'll be able to wake up early this morning, do what I have to do, do my makeup, um, do my hair, take my son to school, come back, do the photo shoot, have everything set up, go ahead and take the pictures and everything. I chop the pictures tomorrow at this point in time. So as I was being organized, I was being able to plan out my days. So as I was planning out my days, I was planning out my days as my schedule came out. Okay, I have to go to class this night, so I'm going to study this day, and I'm going to study this morning to my photo shoot, go to class and come back. And if I don't like my pictures, I can go ahead and still do it on this day and then drop my pictures. It's all about planning the day ahead or a step ahead because you always have to be two steps ahead. And as you plan a day ahead or a step ahead, you have to make sure you're organized. Make sure you make sure you know what times you have to be at work. Make sure you know the times that you have to be at school. You plan out the things that got to be done, but also squeeze in what everything else is necessary for it to be done. Wow. Like, you wouldn't even thought that you had to do all of that stuff and how organized you are, especially, like, somebody, like, for me, I'm like, maybe she got a little – her little cousin or somebody as her assistant and everything. But, no, you did everything by yourself, and that just shows the discipline of how you, like, you're very a, a disciplined person, and when it comes to, like, achieving your goals, mm-hmm. it's, it's really amazing, and I really applaud you on that because Thank that's you. something that us entrepreneurs, especially fairly new entrepreneurs we don't have, especially with com- that comes with being uh, a mother or a father or with being in school and all this stuff. It's like sometimes we can say, okay, maybe we can use that as an excuse, like, okay, well, I can't get this done and I can't get that done. And you're utilizing all 24, you might as well say you have 28 hours in a day. The way yes. You move. <laughs> <laughs> so, what makes desire be desire to keep going when times get tough? And I'm not sure if you ran into any internet trolls or anybody that might try to keep you down. But what are some favorite um, quotes or Bible scriptures or affirmations that you live by? Okay, um, what makes me keep going is like the same principle of the video that I dropped today that said that. When you're riding around in your neighborhood and you see about at least, and you drive about four blocks and you see at least two churches on each block, or if you going down the highway or on the interstate and when you get off, you go into the city and you see about five or six gas stations as you're riding through. Like, it's enough for everybody out here. So there's no such thing as there's not, a, there's not you know, enough for everybody else because somebody going to want something. The thing is, is that what keeps, my desire when I'm in tough time is like, okay, you know what? You got to remember you started from right here, but look where you at now. You the brains behind this. Nobody not the brains behind your thing but you. And what also comes into my mind is like I had learned this from a motivational speech from this guy named Les Brown, and he said, you know, uh, you don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. And that's, that's what, that sticks for me every day, you know. You don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started in order for you to be great. And um, also knowing that my best investment is me. My greatest hater is me. So for me to be able to beat the eyes against myself, I'm going to put my best investment within myself. I use those two quotes to be able to keep me up through tough times. And I also look at my list that I made. I made a list one day of 101 things that I want. And when I look at that, it's like, okay, this is what I want, so I'm going to go ahead and go for it. But those two quotes running in my mind, I cannot fail. One more quote is of uh, Philippians 4.13, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if, you know, I can do anything that strengthens me, we'll, we'll better way to do it with, when God giving you the strength. Most definitely that I like those quotes that you you've given me, and I'm gonna have to definitely look that motivational speaker up because I, I like to keep a plethora of motivational speakers to refer to, not just the same one over and over again, 
because everybody has something. Um, they have something to offer to um one person and many people. So I don't want to limit myself to hearing knowledge from yes. one person. So not only are you an entrepreneur, but like we were just talking about, you're a motivational speaker. So you motivate others, um, entrepreneurs, to take leaps of faith, stay motivated. And um, I've been hearing now financial obedience in a lot of your videos. So yes. what pushed you into getting into speaking to others on your platform about these topics? Well, one thing that I didn't notice is that um, I don't see a lot of people who have bigger platforms than the small emperors of us or whatever like that. I don't see them speaking about, you know, how they got to where they're going. And if they do speak about it, maybe like once in a while. Or, they're, you know, they don't give the proper information to be able to pick the small person who got a small business and who just started, you know. And what made me do it was because people were like save my quotes because I, cause I didn't see anything that was motivational every morning when I woke up. You know, I always saw something negative or I saw some drama and stuff like that. It got more attention than picking somebody up. Like I had went through the process already of picking myself up when I had been down, you know, instead of just looking at somebody else's success and getting lost and getting depressed about it, why not speak about what you're already going through and speak about what you already learned? So I took it up on myself to continue to knowledge myself and study a lot of things that I was going through myself. And as I was going through it myself and I was studying it, I realized I started growing more and more. So as I was studying and, like, putting myself through it and be able to, like, pick up on the actions to do it and get the results, I was noting it down so I can be able to teach other people who are just like me when I was last year when I started. I'm fixing to be in business for two years. So last year, that whole year when I started was a roller coaster. But at the same time, I'm glad within my second year, I can be able to share everybody within that last year what I have learned and what I have put action behind to be able to share it with everybody else. So you don't have to feel like I'm doing something wrong. Or you don't have to feel like, well, why, you know, they don't like me, but they like her. Or why her stuff selling out, but not mine. I'm not good enough. I wanted to be able to share people like, it's not you. It's not just you. It may be some, some actions that you may be able to adjust, but it's not you. You know, it's just everybody else. They don't know you there yet. Be able to stand on your ten toes and be able to show everybody who you are. And I also want to be able to know who was the actual face behind Desire You Beauty because a lot of people sometimes I ask, well, who's the model? Or they say, who's the person behind this brand? And I had one guy that asked me, what makes you so different from any other beauty? Because it looks like you're just selling. And so when he told me that, I was like, I'm going to show you who who's selling, and I'm going to show you who is Desire Boutique, and I'm also going to show you who separates herself apart from everybody else. So I wanted everybody to see who was behind Desire Boutique, and I also wanted to be able to, like, show everybody what I have learned so they can be able to take up on it as well. They don't have to pay for it through anybody else because it's free. I found it for free. I know everybody else will find it for free. And you, you just hit on so many different things, like, the fact that somebody said that to you, it's like, it's so funny because before, like, when I first started following you and, like, I didn't know that the, you, of course, the model, was the person behind the business, I was like, okay, well, I mean, I, I wonder who's the who's the owner. And then once I started to see you, I'm like, okay. And it's so crazy because a lot of people are probably intimidated because, one, you're beautiful as hell. Two, like, they wouldn't think that, okay, a woman of, like, who looks like this or is just, like, they they just wouldn't put you as the model with the running the business. And I guess that's where they are like, okay, well, we didn't know that she's an intellectual person, like, I can actually sit down or I can listen to her talk about, like, basically speak game to me on a life and business and all these other things. So I think that's one thing that people might have failed to realize before you're like, okay, I'm the CEO, this is me, and, okay, what do you have to say now? Like, they they really probably were intimidated, and 
Another thing is um, what I was going to say. Um, I don't know. That's my train of thought. That's okay. Take your time. <laughs> um, oh, yes. When you were saying about the roller coaster with your business, um, yes, that is one thing that a lot of large businesses don't like to talk about until they get bigger and they're sitting on million dollar platforms and stuff. But the one thing is you're actually creating like a way for people to find you relatable and they'll want to purchase from you more. So you're not just selling, you're building a rapport with people through your business and talking to them, giving them, advice and these different quotes and stuff so that's you you're just being more personable and that would make more people be drawn to you to actually want to do business with you and reach out to you for podcasts and stuff because you're not like those nonchalant like big businesses like have we ever seen the the ceo of nike or have we ever seen the CEO of McDonald's and stuff like you have all these people doing all these things and wanting to be so great, but they're not talking about the things. And people feel afraid to talk about the things that they went through, the low times, like you were saying. And I guess they feel like somebody can use it against them. So they're not really looking at it on the bright side. And that's what I, I like about you. You put everything out there. And you tell people how it is, okay? I did X, Y, and Z, and I got A, B, and C. Yeah. So that's I really appreciate you not not just being a a fan and just as being an entrepreneur because it takes vulnerability, like I said, to actually be out here and doing this. And we need more people being vulnerable and telling their journey so that we can have better rapport with people. Yes, we do. We do. And my thing is, it's like, to be honest with you, a lot of, I have a lot more supporters than when I started out. Even though my supporters were people that were close to me, a lot, the other, like, it's like this. I have, like, 50% family members that's my supporters, and the other 50% come from people that are from social media. And I was just like, you know, as I was, get, like, when I was getting myself together and I was studying things and learning from it and stuff like that, nobody didn't know it. But I was like, as I get up, as when, when I when I try this, I'm going to share this with my supporters. So that way when my supporters want to be able to open up a business or they want to be able to do something, with whatever they want to do with themselves, they can be at like, well, I'm, I, I was following her when she first started. So whatever she did after that first year, she shared whatever she did. And so that's just how I am, and it's just like, you know, my supporters were with me when I wasn't even with myself at first, but the NEC was riding with me. So why not share the opportunity to be able to get them something for free that they don't have to pay for? So that way it can be for free, and they can be like, well, they can listen to someone else and be like, man, I spent such and such dollars on this, and I didn't really learn much. But I want my supporters to be like, well, I can go to this person right here and be like, I don't have to spend a dime because, you know, even though I was riding her from day one, I can be able to go to her and she can be able to give me all the information that I need and I don't have to worry about spending a dime because I got somewhere where I'm trying to go. Everybody starts out with a budget. Nobody is not, you know, on a money field. Nobody has a money tree, and I understand that. So in order for me to be able to understand that situation right there, I can be able to understand everything else. So if someone else charging for something, I'm not going to charge for it because I don't see no reason to be charging for it when you're going to go looking for it anyway. Because if when I went to go look for it, because I was I used to I used to be scared to ask other business owners about certain information. And when I did ask, some of them didn't even, a lot of them didn't even give me no reply. You know, so you know what? I took that and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get scared. I didn't get down about it. I took all of that. Like, okay, you know what? You didn't get no response. So, you know what? This is what you're fixing to go do. You're finna go find it yourself. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find it. With, I went on ahead and I found it myself. And now I'm sharing it with everybody else. So, if somebody else wanna open up a business, they can always be welcome and to come to my page and be able to find out their information because it's free. I found it for free. So, why should I charge you for it? You know? 
Yes. And that's one thing that I, myself, because I'm a certified life coach, I had to change my perspective on things because when I got into the life coaching industry after I got my certification, it was all about upselling and this and this and this, trying to help people brand themselves and stuff. And it was the the aspect of a life coach and uh-huh. had been changed so much that it was just like, okay, you're going to get somebody to pay you to tell them how they should live their life. And I'm like, what? So I had to take a step back and look at my priorities because, like you said, people put a dollar sign on knowledge that is out here for three ninety nine, and then they expect everybody to say, oh, well, I believe in so-and-so. They got the magic powers, and they, they speak in all these words when you could just go find it on Google. Yes. Like Google and YouTube, those are the main two. That's yeah. Why I, that's why I went, cause you know, um, like I said, I don't watch nobody else's success because when you watch somebody else's success, you'll find yourself being obsessed with it. You get down and you get depressed about it. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying that to be me, but I'm saying it because it's true. Because I used to do that. Yeah. Now I don't watch nobody else's success. If I see it, I congratulate them. I'm mm-hmm. grateful for their success, but I'm grateful for my success as well. So what better way to be grateful for both success, you know? Yeah. Because when you see somebody else's success, you could be like, yes, I'm going to be there too. But at the same time, know that your success is coming. Know that you're already successful because you started, you went from wanting to starting, and that's a good step. Exactly. You know, so, you know, like I said, it's just like I don't believe in giving out information with a price on it. I believe in getting, giving it out for free because I found it for free. So why should I charge you if I found it for free? Yes, yes. So at what point did you realize that your business was growing from the time, between the time that you started until that peak moment where you knew that, okay, well, these orders are picking up. I got to stay up a little bit later. I got to order a little bit more inventory. I got people requesting this and this look. Like, when did you, when did you notice that? I noticed that when I made, when I made my last backdrop, um, I made that backdrop. <laughs> it took me less time to make it. It was supposed to be done like last year of May in 2018. No, in 20, yeah, in 2018. Hey, peacemakers. Now, this is a little break in between the show, but let's sit down. Let's talk about something. So, Everybody has been coming to me ever since I started my podcast asking, how do you do it? What's your setup? What's going on? How did you start your podcast? How much money did it cost? Well, here's the answer. I'm going to just let you in on this secret. It's called Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use like Even a turtle could use it, and they're pretty slow. (laughs) But, yeah, and now Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid for your podcast right away. Cha-ching! Now, who doesn't love money, especially free money, for you talking, and somebody wants to just advertise their business in between you talking? I mean, it's so easy, even a baby could do it. But yeah, in fact, that's what I'm meaning right now. Like this ad is basically a sponsor ad and I'm getting paid just to talk to you about Anchor. So if you want to get started, if you want to make money for your couch, you know, like that. Um, What is that freaking the is it not the Vry? education connection commercial? And they're like, get up off your couch. You're doing nothing. Blah, blah, blah. But guess what? Now you can sit on your couch. You can just go to anchor.fm slash start and you can join me and hundreds of other people who don't know what they're doing. All you just got to do is click the buttons. Bam. Publish it. Talk. Yeah, that's it. You can add your own background music. Do whatever you want. And guess what? You're getting paid. You don't need a degree. You don't need a certificate. You don't need a license. 
I'm telling you, even a baby could do it. So set your child up for success and and let them make a podcast. I'm just saying. <laughs> so you guys, that is my spill. So come join me in the community of diverse podcasters and talk about whatever the heck you want to talk about. All right. Hashtag keep smiling. Let's take a break and hear a message from my sponsors. Let's get back to the show. But no, it was supposed to be it was supposed to be um made in March of twenty eighteen, but I procrastinated on it. But I got it done this year of March of twenty nineteen and when I made that backdrop and I dropped a sneak peek to relaunch my business and the feedback from it that I had got it was like, you know, Yes, I can't believe you did your own backdrop. This is amazing. I can't wait to see the success moment of it. I'm waiting on those re- I'm waiting on the relaunch. And when I relaunched them, that's when my stuff was like, you know, selling out more than what it normally did when I first started. I was like, wow, okay. And then after that, it was time for me to get something else. As I got that, that started, you know, selling out half the now. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Now it's time for me to step up the A game. So as I seen that my big my like and then not only that, my quotes was my quotes, my morning quotes, they began to get saved more. Um, and that was a big step for me too. I was like, Oh my gosh, so everybody's a, a you know, they're paying attention to my motivational quotes. So I see everybody on a motivational tip this morning. So let me keep it going. Or someone to say, You know what, I love your morning quotes, keep them coming. So I was like, okay, now people are being more active with me, and I see that it's going ahead and going to the top. Now it's time for me to go ahead and get an opportunity to see the real person. And that's when I began to do those videos and stuff like that because I see that my business is growing. So it's now it's time for me to step out of my shell and grow with my grow with my day one supporters, which was my family and my social media supporters. Yeah, I said – Zaya, she she had to step out of the house on y'all. She had to bring it outside. <laughs> yes, I did. Outside yeah. and tell y'all. She had to tell the world. It it's so funny because when I first seen your first video, I was like, I literally the way I imagined it, like when you were talking and like how the camera was, I was like, I feel like she's talking to the world because she like how you putting it on social media and it's like out there for the world to see. Kind of like a like. It, it was just like this thing that I was thinking about in my head, but I was like, okay, she she's stepping out of her comfort zone and she she letting the world know about about her and her business. And I yeah. was like, okay, you know, I was like, it's better to show everybody as I'm growing what it looks like when you continue to when you be consistent with yourself. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to hide it. You can be able to wait until so I can be able to wait until I have a hundred thousand followers and then be able to share it. No, I'm gonna share it while I got these three thousand. So when yeah. you speak is, so when you start your business, you can be like, man, I seen this person right here when it was at two thousand followers, and now they're right here. And look at me, I'm starting mine, and I'm growing too. You know, I want yeah. everybody to be on the same, on the same as the same like bad system. You know, you can do it, I can do it, she can do it, then we can do it. You know. Yeah, And it's just like, you know, I just had to be able to show everybody like, okay, look, it's time for you to go on the head and share everything you know now, because everything that you know now is working for your business. So now you can be able to share it and help the next person. Yeah. So what other businesses do you have, um, if you have any, and what are they? Um, The other thing is that, you know, I have men, I sell men clothing. And um, as of right now, that's about it. I do have other things in mind because, you know, uh, I am creative. And do, and although, you know, uh, I am going to be able to adventure off into those things, it's just that right about now I'm focusing on getting both the men clothing and the women clothing out there. So as that, you know what I'm saying, get out there, I can be able to showcase my other talent, which is my creativity. Okay. Yeah, because when I saw you pop up with the men's one, I was like, okay, now she acting up. Like, 
Yes. You and your man or desire. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So what advice would you give an aspiring entrepreneur or an entrepreneur who might have lost hope in their business? Um, the best advice I can give them is, you know, never be afraid. Never be afraid to claim your business. Like, never be afraid to claim what's yours. And to, like, just always know that your best investment is you and your biggest hater is you. Nobody else. You know, when, you can, when you're trying to compete against somebody else, you're only competing against yourself. You need everything that you need within yourself. And always know that if you believe it, you're going to receive it. So when you want it, you ask for it. And then you believe in what you're asking for. And you always have faith. With whatever you do, it don't matter what it is. You know, I always have that faith and that belief. When you have belief, belief and faith, you can't go no wrong because life doesn't do you doesn't do any wrong. It's only responding to what you're asking for. So when you ask for something, and you feel like you're not gonna get it. You're not gonna get it. But if you ask for something, and you got faith that you're gonna have it, and you believe that you're gonna have it, you're gonna get it. But you have to be consistent with yourself. You have to discipline yourself. You have to put yourself. Put your goal right in front of you and always have it in front of you, you know, as long as you keep going. Consistency, faith, and belief, you cannot go wrong with those three things. Yes, and I like what you said at the beginning when you said, don't be afraid to claim your business. And that's what a lot of us entrepreneurs do when we're, like, so in, like, the, the small let's call it the newborn stage of your business and you don't like to claim it. It's like, oh, yeah, I got a business and people don't really ask too much about it. And yeah, you, you, you like you scared to say it. Business. Yeah, you tell them, like, I'm, I'm a business owner. You don't tell them I have a small business. No, you're telling you're a business owner because that's what you want to be. You don't want to be no small business person. No, that makes you sound like you're working for a company. You're working for someone else, for, for somebody else. No, mm-hmm. claim your business. Tell them, I'm a business owner. And it's yeah. like, well, you're a business owner, but you work here. Yes, I do work here. I'm a full-time business owner, and I'm a part-time person here, wherever you work at, because that's what I was doing. You mm-hmm. know, I was telling people, I'm a business owner. Now, I don't consider myself as a business owner no more. I consider myself as a CEO because I then I, I pretty much put it in my head that my business is going to expand into more than one brand, and so now it's going to be a company. It's not going to just be a business. Yep. And I, I like when you did that video and you were saying how you change the um how you have your shirt made and yes. you change it on your shirt and stuff. I was like, Yes, I like that. And yes. I think you made a statement, um, something about um like yeah, when you said something about the small business. Like I had an interaction with someone um about two weeks ago because I'm in the military as well in the Army Reserve and so when um I was speaking to one of my battle buddies, he was like, yeah, so so how's your little business going? I looked at him, and I snapped my head, and I said, little business? I said, boy, you better quit playing with me. I said, right. you better you better change that. This little business is a, is a big business, so quit playing with yes, me. Yes, that's how you do it. You claim your stuff. Claim yes. your business. Because just how you say it like that, and I'm pretty sure you said it with so much feeling and gratitude about your business, it's going to be a big business. Mhm. Cause like a lot of people have been watching me, and when I started out life coaching, and they see all the ups and downs and the changes that I've been making, and when I change everything, like the position in which I'm presenting my business, I tell people about it. I make videos and I let people know, hey, this is what I'm doing now. This is what's going on. This is what's going on. And so people are probably like, what in the world is she doing? Like she started out doing this and this. But overall, I know what I'm doing with my business. So I was about to, I was about to square up with him for a minute. We was about to fight because he said little business. I said, oh. yeah. Well, you just yes. don't know. I had to, I had to dust that off. I had to dust that off <laughs> because we were gonna have some problems. But name one of the best and not so great moments that you've had being an entrepreneur that you won't forget. Um, okay. My best, the best, um, you know, the best moment that I ever had was realizing how much money I can make 
within an hour and a half versus being at a nine to five. Um, it was my very first pop up shop, and um, I had made half of my check within an hour and a half, and that was the best decision I ever made when I said, I'm going further with my business. I am not shutting it down. It's not going to be a part-time business. It's going to be a full-time business. That was the best moment I ever had because the pop-up shop was only for five hours and within an hour and a half, and it was like an hour and a half left to be at the pop-up shop because the whole, what, three and a half hours, I didn't make any money. But towards the end, I made half of my check. And that was like more than what I had paid for the pop-up shop. I think I paid like... I think fifty or eighty dollars to be a part of the pop up shop, and I made half of my check, and that's a check from a nine to five job. Wow. Um, yes. The um, you said the uh, the word is not so great. Um, was uh doing pop up shops with other women where I didn't feel welcome, or I felt that the energy was bad, or I felt like, you know, I was just you know, it it just it just wasn't right, and you know, even though I didn't show it, I just knew it. But it was like it was okay because I'm cool with it. Like I'm a grown woman, I can handle myself. So if anything comes towards my way, I know how to act accordingly. You know, or I can be able to show you what the real person what the real person is. So those were like the worst ones. But like I said before, the best one because. The best one was my the pop up shop that I did. My very first pop up shop made half of my half of my check within an hour and a half. And the worst one was being able to do like at least two different pop up shops where I didn't feel that welcome or the energy was bad. Yeah, and that's one thing about entrepreneurship is like um, we try to take these opportunities. Like, okay, I'm gonna go and try to appeal to this person's, um, their fan base or the people that they might have that are coming to support them. And it's like, oh, okay, it might not be that good, but we know what to look for and the signs and to, okay, let me evaluate this before I go and actually do business with these type of people anymore. So right. I, definitely can, uh, I, I definitely can feel you on that. Yes, my um, my my bad experience. It it wasn't. It didn't come from the customers though. It came from other mm-hmm. people who was like vendors as well. So it was just like, you know, like it was just like you know, it's not worth it being pulled out my character because yeah. like you know what? Because you got that type of energy towards me, I know how I know how you I know I know where I'm gonna be at then. So it's like okay, I'm being watched. It's like mm-hmm. you either knew I was coming or. You're just not trying to, you know, you, you're just not that type of business person that you say you are. So yeah. it's just like, you know, it was just that. And it was just like I felt some, I felt a little bit of type of way because, like, we're supposed to be gar- girl bosses. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're supposed yeah. to be, you know, in this together, but I guess we're not. So that's why I say, like, you know, those was like, my worst stuff that I'm not going to forget. Yeah. And that definitely, that, that first impression, especially when you're a business owner, it's your first impression is a lasting impression and you will know how things are going to be especially watch those might be the same people when you have an event when your business is way bigger than it is now and they might say oh hey girl you remember you know me we're back at so and so and it's like oh yeah I remember you but I'm not going to keep that same, that same energy that you had before right I'm not going right. to kill, I'm not, not about to kill you with with weakness. I'm going to kill you with kindness. And I'm going to say, oh, hey, girl, how you been? Like, right. those, the, that's the same. The moments like that, it just shows you how people change, especially when the, like, the position that you're in, when you're in a, a different position from them. Yes, and those times was around, those, and that happened when I was in my first year, Mm-hmm. Of the business owner, I was like, "Are you serious? Like, this is just my first year." Yeah. Yeah. So, so I was gonna say, where do you see Desire Peak, and where do you see yourself, Desire Peak, um, in five years? Um, I see Desire Peak uh launching into a uh, a bigger brand, 
And within five years, I see, you know, myself as a successful business. Well, even though I'm already a successful business, I'm I feel like I feel like me being a, a um an educator in the in the success of being a successful business owner and being able to continue to pass on what I learned and what kind what and what put me in a position to be that I am now and passing it on to everybody else. Um, I also see myself doing um bigger like uh doing like free public organizations. Um, I see myself picking people up and within the way I see myself doing pop up shots. I see myself with a store. You know, I see myself doing a lot of great things to continue my business and to be able to help people along the way so they can be able to like figure out what they want to do, invest in what they want to do and be able to achieve that. Okay. I definitely think those are a lot of achievable goals and you're already on the road to doing that. So we're just going to be keeping our eye on you and congratulating you every step of the way. So enough about business. Let's have some fun. So what is your favorite season? Girl, my favorite season is spring. Why spring? Spring is because, like, you have – it's not too hot, but it's not too cool. It's like a real mild, like, you know – Warm is cool is, you know what I'm saying, kind of vibe. Like, I can be able to wear certain colors and it'll bring out my skin tone. Or I can be able to wear certain things. Like, I could wear summer in the daytime and wear spring, and you know, and wear like a little bit of fall at night. Those, that spring is my favorite season. Okay. So, what is your dream place to travel to? Um, My dream place to travel to is that. I want to be able to go to like uh like the Caribbean islands, you know, or if I can go to Africa, I want to be able to experience those two places, and I want to be able to like discover the things that's not here that I can be able to discover that's over there, you know, get to learn get to know what they know and like be able to like translate what I have what I know that's over here versus what's over there because a lot of things that they portray on t v you know you can't really relate to because they only show the bad. They don't show the good. So I want to see the good that's over there in those two areas. Yeah, that that one, that last thing that you just said, a lot of my friends, they're African. And so, um, like, from Nigeria and stuff. And so one of my friends, uh, I was just talking to him recently, and we're planning, uh, like, a big group of us are trying to go in December to Africa. And so he was like, yeah. He was like, it's so fun, it's beautiful over there, it's not wet, it seems, it's not all dirt roads and huts and all this kind of stuff. The way mm-hmm. people think, we, a lot of people aren't drinking out of rivers and all that stuff. Like, there's those areas, like, America has a, a way of showing, like, the bad side of other places, but we don't sit up here and show the bad areas that might be seen in our state. Mm-hmm. We glorify everything else except for what is actually going on here. Exactly. Exactly. So what are three celebrities um, or clothing brands that you'd like to collaborate with? Mm-hmm. Well, for a celebrity-wise, you know, uh, let me see. Like, I I believe, like, my biggest celebrity that I would like to work with is, like, J. Cole. Like, or, um, you know, who else uh, that I would like to have in my – I know, like, I'm a big J. J. Cole fan, so, like, I would definitely would love to work with J. Cole and be able to collab with him. I also would like to do business with, like um, – I would like to do business with, like, Jay-Z, you know, and like all, all Beyonce, either one of them two would be good. And like all, all Rihanna, like you know, we want to be like I do want like at least two men and a and a woman, or two women and a man. Like I want to be able to collab with those type of people. I believe like they have like a different mindset that you can be able to vibe to. And it's like you know, as they pull out their collections, it's like they care about not only do they care about their own people, but at the same time. They care about the unity of what they do, put into their product, or what is, or what they do. 
Yeah. Yeah, they're they're basically they're real philanthropists. Yes. So it's just not like, okay, we just gonna throw this out here because they're gonna love us and they're gonna uh and the and they just gonna buy it. No. Like it's like the work that they put in their music, like with Brianna, she came out with Fendi Beauty. When she came out with Fendi Beauty, as far as I'm concerned, like I don't well I wear makeup, but I don't wear makeup, like, liquid makeup on my face or anything. Like, like I do, like, eye area makeup, which is, like, thinning my eyebrows, put, out, put on eyeliner, uh, like, I put on some lashes, and I put on lipstick. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I heard that Rihanna makeup is the bomb, like, and her, um, what is that, the little glow stuff? Oh, oh yeah, like the, um... I don't know about makeup, but I think I know what you're talking about. The yeah, highlighter? They make it, yes, that. They say yeah. that is so lit. Oh, oh yeah. I, like I, I went and saw it in the store because I didn't buy it because I'm not really a makeup person either. Right. Um, I went and tested it out, and it's for all different skin tones, really. Right, right. And that's what I think about is, like, you didn't just think about your own community, but you thought about a whole unit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, when people think about that, it's like, okay, you're not thinking small. You're thinking logical, you know. You're thinking big. And that's what I like to do. I like to think big. I don't like to think small. Because someone by the name by Jim Roth, he said, don't work harder, work smarter, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what are three fun facts? Uh, what are three fun facts about desire? Well, you know, Desire is funny. She is fun to be around, and you can be able to, like, learn something from her. You know, like, it's not every day that you can be able to talk to someone and be able to learn something within the process but have fun at the same time. It's not like, you know, I'm a, I'm business-wise, but at the same time, it's not like I'm, I'm talking business, you know, 24 hours out of the day, 365 days out of the year. No. I do talk about business, but at the same time, I have a limit on how I talk about business because I have a personal life too. So, yeah. In order, that's how you enjoy. That's how you enjoy being able to like balance out being a business owner and be able to like have a personal life at the same time. So I like to laugh. I like to crack jokes. I like to go out and have a good drink or so. You know, I like to you know I like to you know what I'm saying talk about, you know what I'm saying, certain things or anything like that. Like, I like to see what's going on sometimes, like, yeah. and it's just like, you know, that's just how I am. Like, you know, I can be like an educator. I can be able to, like, be someone you can learn from. But I got also, I learn from people every day, you know. Yeah. So it's just You're like, a very, very versatile person. Yes, I'm very versatile, you know. But at the same time, I'm very helpful. So if you like, I'm struggling in this area and this and that, I give and give you options on what you could do. And it's not like you have to take it, but it's like, you know, or try this or try something like that. Like, I'm, I I do stuff like that. But it's like, I'm also fun. I'm fun to be around. I'm funny, you know. I yeah. crack jokes sometimes and everything else. But it's like, you know, I, li- I like to have a good time as well. Okay. So what are some clothing items or accessories that you have too much of? Are you talking about my personal closet or... Yeah, your personal closet. Girl, oh my God. I have too many joggers, okay? Why like, joggers? <laughs> because I'm a jogger person. Like, I like jeans, but I like sweatpants as well. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm like very comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. Yes, I like to be very comfortable. So, you know, nine times out of ten, you'll either see me in jeans or some sweatpants slash joggers. And sometimes it'd be my men's joggers that I have on. I, like, keep a pair for myself because they're very comfortable. But that's the main thing that I have too much of. Uh, accessories, I don't really have accessories. Um, Anything about an accessory, I don't really have. Like, I may have a couple chains, but not too many. Not as many jeans, like, not as many jeans and uh, joggers. Not as many of those, though. Not a lot of purses or sunglasses or anything? No, girl. I have, like, one or two shades. I have, like, one or two purses. You know, I gave up all my – I gave up a lot of my name brand stuff that everybody wear now a long time Mm -hmm. ago. I gave all that up. I gave all that up for my business. So I can't rock it. If I can't support my brand, I can't support nobody else's brand. 
um, purses, um, I had them drafted off from being a purse person. Like, I would wear a purse, but that's only when I'm going to, like, other places. Other than that, I'm really, like, a backpack kind of person or a okay. sling bag kind of person, you know? Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's just like I don't have too many of that stuff anymore because I'm used to being comfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can, I, that's the same way as me. Like, I can say that I am more of a crossbody purse wearer. So mm-hmm. I have a lot of crossbody purses, and they're small crossbody purses. Yes. Um, I'm the little bag queen, like. <laughs> <laughs> but you have okay. better assets with it, girl. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, because I have a lot of those. And clothing-wise, I think I have a lot of, uh, a lot of, Jackets that yeah I'm the I'm the just like a windbreaker type of girl. Uh huh. I love and a good those, windbreaker. Yeah, because I can always put those up under like a jean jacket or like a a cargo jacket or something like in the in the winter or the fall and then like in the springtime I can wear those too. So right. Now let's talk about food. What's your favorite food? Oh my god, girl, my favorite. <laughs> Chicken. I'm not gonna even lie. I'm a chicken head. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like one of my friends. He loves chicken. This boy would eat chicken in every form ever. Like, yes, so what, what's your favorite type of chicken? <laughs> I'm a big chicken head type of person. Somebody need to invite me to a chicken sex because I will cut up. Okay. <laughs> I'm a biggest. I'm the biggest chicken head. Probably. I love chicken and. You know, it, I, I mean, pasta is my favorite food as well, but if it came down to pasta and chicken, it'll be chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so what about chicken alfredo? Oh, girl, yes. I That's would. the best of both worlds, the chicken and you. Girl, we Because I don't eat pork. I don't eat pork no more. I stopped eating that stuff. So, you know, when I cook it now, I make chicken alfredo. I make chicken. Well, we call it chicken fettuccine because we put our little Cajun stuff all in it. But mm-hmm. it's so, baby, that is the best, okay? I can eat that a whole week straight. Oh, my God. You sound like, yeah. you sound like, um, <laughs> what I was about to say. It's one person I seen, it's, it's something that they said they could eat for a whole week. You sound like me, too, because I'll be eating Chick-fil-A. Yeah, I oh, girl, I, girl, Chick-fil-A is heaven, okay? Yeah. I just like, can I be a part of a company, too? <laughs> you know, and I love chicken over there. I love I love Chick Fil A. I'm a big Chick Fil A person. My sister works there, so when I go out to town and go see her, you know, yeah. I always tell her like, "Can I stay at your house so you can bring me some Chick Fil A at night?" <laughs> yeah, I need to meet your sister so I can get some Chick Fil A. <laughs> girl, what? So when I stay at her house and so she come inside, I girl, I was I would I could be sleeping. I would jump up because I know she bringing me some Chick Fil A. <laughs> Oh my God! You sound like me. That's that's me all the way. I know Chick Fil A. All of my friends, they would tell me. They'll ask me, Oh, what what time Chick Fil A close? Ten p.m. Okay, what time they open? not open okay. on Sundays. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> they uh, girl, I only eat certain stuff at Chick Fil A, but to, I'm right or die. I would spend my okay. last dollar. I, yes. I could be. I could be um about to go. To let me say Africa, but guess what? I'm about to get me some Chick Fil A before I go. I got to. <laughs> I spend like at least no lie about a good fifteen dollars at Chick Fil A. <laughs> man, I've had to start using my points. You got that? Girl, no. I need to get oh it. No, I need to get it. I need to get it. I need to get it. Oh my God. We, we ain't friends no more. If you don't know about the app, you uh uh-uh. uh. Girl, so let me right there. Because it took me, when I went to Atlanta, girl, Atlanta got a, girl, they got a walk up, they got like a, it's like a walk up drive through outside, girl. You just park your car, get out, walk up to it, and they take your order, and then they tell you, be like, you can get four more extra sauces, and then you walk to the other <laughs> side and they get your food, girl, and I felt in love. <laughs> it was like, I'm not worried about no app, just give me my food. <laughs> I was in Atlanta for like five days, and I was there at Chick Fil A every single day. <laughs> yeah. 
That's not like me. Y'all, last time I went to Chick Fil A, I got a walk up right time. there. She could just talk the car, and then I could just walk right here, and you would take my order, and then I walk around and go get my food and sit down, and it's mm-hmm. outside. Girl, yeah. I ain't gotta stand I'll... no line. <laughs> heaven, 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 heaven. Yes. So, what is your favorite thing to do? You know, my favorite thing to do is to. Let me see, cause I have I, I like to drink my wine. I'm not gonna lie, but I'm a wine though too. Yes, I'm I'm a big wine though. Oh snap! So my favorite thing to do is like to like knowing that you know what I'm saying. Not only I'm doing things, but I'm helping other people in a certain way. Like I love to be able to like know that I'm passing on what I do to other people. Like I I love to be able to share the things that I'm doing. Now, sometimes, you know, it may not be good to sh- to share everything that you're doing, but it's good to share the knowledge. That's the fun part. Because I think about it like this. When you share some type of knowledge with somebody else, you don't know what somebody else was going through, and all of a sudden they come across your page and be like, man, they just don't know how much they pick me up. You know, you know you could be able to, like, help somebody else, be able to uplift other people, because I love to be with my family. And when I'm with my family, that's what they do to me, like, they motivate me. They pick me up, and they don't know it. And they like they like don't know it because it's just like we just all here together. And we just having a good time. We're laughing and we talking, and that's that's what I like to do. So like you know, I like to interact with like you know what I'm saying, just being like that, and being with my family. That's the most you know what I'm saying, fun thing to do. You know, because we have a good time. It's like we have a club inside the house, but it's just family. You know. Yeah, yeah. I I love those moments. Girl, that's why I think I don't even like going to the club like that. I could be around my family, turn on some music, because it was always like little family parties when I was growing up. So I Uh I just feel like, shoot, club at the house. Right. Nothing. You know, spending no money, especially only if you're spending on food. Right. Yeah, just, just stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So, like, you know, I don't even go out no more. Like, my friends, they try to get me to come out sometimes. I'll be like, nah, I'm going to pass because, you know, like I said, as my business growing, that it's like, you know, I'm growing. So, it's like a lot of that, I don't, I don't, I have been, you know, self-disciplined in myself for like 60 days and counting, you know, well, more than 60 days. And as I did that, I cut out a lot of things. And so, as I got done self-disciplined myself for those 60 days, I decided to keep it like that, and so I keep it as my everyday routine. So part of my routine is, you know, stay focused. You know, don't do anything out of the ordinary because you have a job to get done. Yes, ma'am. So is there anything else you want to let the listeners know about any upcoming sales or um, anything before we end the episode? Yes, I would like my ladies to know that I I desire you to teach. We'll be doing a Mother's Day. Um, I'm going to be doing a Mother's Day uh, discount off the website on Mother's Day and the day before Mother's Day. And, you know, you all can always follow me at iShop, B-I-S-A, as an Apple, Y-A-H-B. Or you can go to my website at www.ishopdesireb.com and decide, I'm sorry, subscribe to the email and address and you'll automatically get a 10% off. Um, ladies, I also want y'all to know that, you know, you can always follow me, ask me any type of questions or any information that you would like to know. I am very open to be able to give you all, all that type of information and always stay focused. Keep yourself first and always remember that you don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be good. Hey, y'all, this is Desire UBC. And you're listening to Peace of Mind with the Soul Coach. Hey, you guys. I just want to let you know, thank you for listening to my episode. And you can keep up with us on Instagram at your underscore peace of mind. Me on my personal page at the soul coach, coach with a K. And we're on Twitter at keep smiling POM. We're on YouTube at peace of mind with 
tsk you can email me at your peace of mind 2016 at gmail.com um let me see what else what else what else we got you can find this episode located on apple music google play spotify everywhere youtube on our channel because we do drop it on there and yeah be sure to rate review give this episode a hand clap give it a thumbs up five stars, everything. Let us know what you want to hear, what episode, um, what features you want to hear on episodes and let's keep it going. So peacemakers, thank you for keeping this going and hashtag keep smiling.